Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at the dark reaction or um, the light independent reactions, also known as the Calvin Benson cycle. So I think this is beautiful and um, yeah, but I also wanted to point out that if you're in AP Bio right now, um, the curriculum or the course framework says this is like the only time it's mentioned where it says the energy captured in light reactions and transferred to ATP and NADPH powers the production of carbohydrates from carbon dioxide in the Calvin cycle, which occurs in the stroma of the chloroplast. And then in another area, it says the carbon fixation or Calvin Benson cycle reactions of photosynthesis occur in the stroma. And then it also says exclusion statement memorization of the steps in the Calvin cycle, the structure of the molecules, and the names of the enzymes, with the exception of ATP synthase, are beyond the scope of the course and the AP exam. So if you are one of like my students or an AP Bio student, um, I don't, like, don't stress too much about the Calvin cycle. Um, I feel like the light reaction is more like heavily emphasized in the curriculum and yeah so as we go through the calvin cycle focus on carbon fixation that's mentioned and the production of carbohydrates uh, without getting hung up on all of the super small details okay so um when we looked at the light reaction in my previous video we saw that um uh, oxygen was a waste product it was produced in the light reaction but atp and nadph were the main products of the light reaction and this is where um, the idea of photosynthesis being an anabolic pathway comes into play because this is where in the calvin benson cycle the plant or the chloroplast is able to build macromolecules or organic molecules from air from carbon dioxide but in order to build bonds you have to invest energy and that energy is cellular energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. So you need the light reaction first in order for the Calvin Benson cycle to occur to make glucose or G3P. Now the Calvin Benson cycle is called the dark reaction or the light independent reaction. It doesn't mean that it happens at night. What it means is that it doesn't directly require light but it does need the light dependent reaction to occur first because it relies on that ATP and NADPH. So if you put a plant in like a cupboard or the shade or it doesn't get enough sunlight, then it will stop growing because it can't produce its organic molecules. Um, it doesn't mean, it, it, it does not mean light reaction happens during the day. If you put a plant in the dark, now the Calvin cycle will occur, okay? All right, um, so let's go ahead and see how this works. So the Calvin cycle is a cycle, and um, basically, the it is broken down into three steps, three stages, three phases. So the first one is called carbon fixation, where the um, the chloroplast will take carbon dioxide from air, and it will fix it into and incorporate it into an actual molecule, which we'll see. So the first step is carbon fixation. And then we have phase two, which is the reduction phase, where we're actually going to invest that energy from ATP, as well as the electrons and hydrogens from NADPH. And then out comes a G3P, a simple like three carbon little sugar will be made. And then we need to reorganize things. So we'll have the regeneration phase that brings us back to the start of the cycle in order to start all over again. So um, here are words for people who like words. The Calvin cycle reduces carbon dioxide to form a, a simple three carbon sugar. But, oh, <sighs> investing the ATP and NADPH that were made during the light reaction. So let's go ahead and um, talk about this. So plants, they do need to build all their own organic molecules, as well as a way to store energy that was made during the light reactions. So while ATP is a form of cellular energy, you don't really store energy in ATP. You're going to store it in glucose or in lipids or something. You'll store energy that way. So if a plant is trying to make glucose, for example, a monosaccharide, and if you remember plants and how they're made, um, their cell walls are totally made from glucose. Um, their energy so 
their energy storage molecules. Starch is all glucose. Um, and so we have to think, well, what do they have available to them? One of the things is carbon dioxide from our air. Now, this is so beautiful. During the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide is going to be reduced. So you're going to take carbon dioxide, you're going to take the electrons and the hydrogens from the light reaction and like attach them onto carbon dioxide, dioxide which this is like the most basic, not even super accurate, but in your head. Um, take the electrons and the hydrogens and we're going to reduce carbon dioxide to form glucose. And so, um, yeah, so basically we're building, oh gosh, I'm so sorry, we're building uh, during the Calvin cycle and this process of taking that carbon dioxide and beginning to incorporate it into an organic molecule um, is carbon fixation. So um, in the Calvin cycle, we start with a five carbon, not we, but the plants, uh, start with a five carbon molecule called rubis, uh, RUBP, ribulose bisphosphate. And um, we have three of those. So here we have 15 carbons. So we should end the end of the Calvin cycle with three RUBPs with 15 carbons. And um, there's hydrogens and oxygens and stuff also on these molecules, but it's easier if we just kind of follow the carbons. So at the beginning of the Calvin cycle, um, <laughs> Our first step is going to be carbon fixation, where the um, chloroplast is able to take uh, the carbon dioxide out of a, like the form of air, CO2, and incorporate it into a, a molecule. So here we have that 5-carbon ruby P, where we have this super important enzyme called Rubisco. Rubisco is that red enzyme, and it basically does carbon fixa fixation. It'll take that carbon dioxide from the air and incorporate it into Ruby P, forming a six carbon molecule. However, that um, six carbon molecule, well, this will happen three times for those three Ruby P's. You'll get your uh, Rubisco enzyme. It'll incorporate carbon dioxide, so carbon fixation, taking it from the air and incorporating it into a molecule, um, into three six carbon molecules. So now we are at 18 carbons. However, this is, um, uh, not done, right? So in step two, oh, I should mention it's pretty unstable. So it kind of breaks apart right away into uh, a three carbon compound, a three carbon molecule. So uh, next, so you can pause the video and read this if you'd like. Uh, so phase two is the reduction phase. And we're basically going to invest some of that ATP from the light reaction into a series of chemical reactions. And uh, we're going to phosphorylate those carbon molecules. So this will happen six times. Um, okay, sorry, it's on the timer. We will also take advantage of the electrons. If you remember from my previous video, when we move energy in the cell, we move it in the form of electrons. So here, um, so really all those phosphates are still attached, but I just got rid of them for simplicity. Um, but here we will take those uh a reduced electron carriers, the NADPHs, and we're going to oxidize the electron carriers while reducing these molecules. So if you think about an, a redox reaction, we're going to oxidize the electron carrier, and therefore that electrons and hydrogens need to go somewhere, so we're going to reduce that three carbon molecule. And in the process, one of those phosphates comes off. So here is what's happening. To each of these so this is in phase two now you do not oh shoot you do not need to memorize all the little details and reactions that are occurring remember our big picture and understanding is that we um oh that was kind of our big picture is that we are trying to just understand the big idea of the Calvin cycle. So you've seen here that the plant has taken in carbon dioxide in carbon fixation using the enzyme Rubisco, um, forming a six carbon molecule that is not stable and breaks into two three carbons. Then we invested some ATP. We've used the electrons and hydrogens from the NADPH. And now that um, NADPH, that we picked up from the electrons uh, transport chain of the light reaction is now been oxidized. So technically, um, so it's okay. So remember we made our ATP um, 
during the light reaction. Okay. All right, all right. So here um, we have one of these extra three carbons. So if you remember, we started with 15 carbons, um, and then we took in three more during carbon fixation. So these three extra carbons that we have, we actually are going to use those, and that is um, like the main building block of organic molecules. These three carbons will actually leave the Calvin cycle at this point, and this is our G3P. So G3P is that very simple three carbon sugar that is made during the Calvin cycle. This is the main, like the most basic building block for our carbohydrates, our lipids, our proteins, and our nucleic acids. Um, so this G3P will actually leave and go to the cytoplasm where other enzymes will convert it in different chemical reactions to make our, our organic molecules of life. So at this point, um, that G3P leaves and we're left back with those 15 carbons that we started with. But you notice they're not in that five carbon Ruby P shape or structure. So um, here's a summary for people who like words. So G3P is the main product of the Calvin cycle. It is the building block for all organic molecules, your carbs, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. It is made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and will go to the cytoplasm where it'll meet its fate. I love the word fate. And so here, um, the third phase of the Calvin cycle is the regeneration phase, where a few more ATP will be invested. Remember, the Calvin cycle is an anabolic metabolic pathway and be reorganized back into your five molecules of Ruby P. So basically that is it for the Calvin cycle and it can start all over again with the carbon fixation phase. Um, and when we look at the big picture inside the chloroplast, so here you can see, we, oh, we know that this is the chloroplast. Uh, because we can see here that it has a double membrane. We can also see the thylakoid, I love this picture. Um, you could see the thylakoid membrane here with our proton gradient from our light reaction um, flowing through ATP synthase where that ATP is now invested in the Calvin cycle. You can see how the carbon dioxide is um, incorporated into the Calvin cycle. It's attached to the Ruby P forming um, six three carbon molecules, and then we invest some ATP, some NADPH from the light reaction, forming G3P. That is our most basic simple sugar, and then we reorganize and start all over. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, I know the Calvin cycle is tough for kids. I would recommend watching some other YouTube videos. I know Ted Ed makes a good um, little animated video on the Calvin cycle that is also helpful. Okay, good job guys.